The Amazon Rainforest Case Study from the Water and Carbon module. This case study goes in the water and carbon part of the specification, focusing on the major stores of water and carbon around the earth. This is 3.1.1.6 case study, a case study of a tropical rainforest setting to illustrate and analyse key themes in water and carbon cycles and their relationship to environmental change and human activity. Location of case study. The Amazon is located in South America and covers 40% of the whole South American landmass, which is 7.76 to 8.24 million square kilometres. This makes up the biogeographic Amazon, which is 80% covered in forest. Eight countries contain part of the Amazon rainforest, with Brazil having the largest share, making Brazil the most important country in managing the rainforest for future generations. General features of the Amazon rainforest. Over 1 million plant species, 500 mammal species and 2,000 species of fish have habitats here, meaning the Amazon rainforest holds 10% of known biodiversity. This includes many endangered species, such as the Amazonian manatee, the black caiman and the piraruku. This means that protecting the Amazon is crucial in keeping these species alive for future generations. The Amazon receives over 2,000 millimetres of rainfall each year, with an average temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, making it a typical rainforest climate. The Amazon River accounts for 15% of river discharge into the ocean. However, in the past 50 years, the Amazon has lost 50% of its cloud cover, and 80% of this change is due to cattle ranching. More than 1.4 million hectares of forests have been cleared since 1970, and conversion for cattle grazing, in order to make beef and leather, makes up 60% of deforestation. 327 square kilometres were deforested in March 2020, with 9,152 destroyed in total over the past year, which is the highest level of deforestation since 2008. In 2017, forest cover was only 82% of pre-1970 levels. The water cycle in the Amazon rainforest. Each tree releases hundreds of litres of water through transpiration each day, and this water will then condense as fall and fall as rain, some of it in the Amazon and some of it far away, so the Amazon provides rain for areas outside of the rainforest. The rainforest receives 1,500 to 3,000 millimetres of rain each year, with most of this coming from October to May in the wet season. One third of the rain comes from evapotranspiration and the other two thirds from water that has evaporated over the Atlantic Ocean. Rain in the dry season will decrease by 21% due to deforestation, as deforestation means less evapotranspiration and recycling of water, which is a key part of the water cycle in the Amazon. The water cycle continued. There is reduced evapotranspiration from areas that have been cleared, resulting in less cloud cover and so less precipitation to fall. The cleared areas also reflect more solar energy than the forest canopy, creating warm air which rises and weakens the low pressure system that guarantees the Amazon such high levels of rainfall. Rising air over cleared areas creates vegetation breezes, which means localised low pressure over the cleared areas receive more rain, stealing water from forested areas. Through flow and percolation occur more quickly without trees and less water is taken up. So river flow increases as a percentage of rainfall and water reaches the river more quickly, creating potential for flooding. However, as the basin is now receiving less rainfall, river flow decreases overall. Particulates that are created when forest is burnt using slash and burn techniques to clear forest is a common technique to clear areas so cattle can be kept there. Water vapour condenses around these particulates, creating droplets that are too small to participate and reducing rain locally. Hydroelectric power plants use dams, which involves flooding areas of the rainforest, such as the Balbina Dam, which flooded 2,400 square kilometres when built. This affects the flow of the river, reducing water available downstream. More standing water also increases the potential for evaporation, leading to the potential loss of vapour from the Amazon basin. The carbon cycle in the Amazon. The rainforest holds 90 to 140 billion tonnes of carbon overall, 
and has a net absorption rate of approximately 0.3 billion tonnes a year, as it takes in 2.2 billion tonnes a year and emits 1.9 billion tonnes a year. However, capacity to absorb carbon is decreasing from 2 billion in 1990 to just 1 billion in 2015. This means that the Amazon no longer absorbs more carbon emissions than are created by Latin America. Trees that are cut down can no longer take up and sequester carbon, and the carbon that they hold is released into the atmosphere as they are burnt or bro broken down by insects. Growing amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere have increased tree growth, but tree mortality rates have also increased by a third since the mid-1980s. Growth rates have stalled since the early 2000s. Increased drought, see above about the water cycle, can cause forest fires, and species in the Amazon have not evolved to be fire resistant, so large amounts of greenhouse gases can be released by fire events. Droughts kill trees, which releases their carbon and reduces the sink effect of the rainforest. Tropical forests have so far absorbed one fifth of global carbon emissions, which allows the trees to grow larger. Illegal logging reduces the carbon absorbed, but also leads to the problems described earlier with the water cycle. Clearing forests using slash and burn methods releases greenhouse gases, mostly carbon dioxide. The cattle ranching carried out on this land then produces methane, a more potent greenhouse gas, further increasing the warming effect on the atmosphere. Carbon cycling and sequestration is prevented altogether when trees are removed and can no longer photosynthesize. Forest is sometimes cleared to allow drilling for oil, such as the government in Ecuador opening the Yasuni National Park to drilling. This brings up carbon that has been sequestered in the earth for millions of years and quickly releases it into the atmosphere, increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and so warming the planet. This has further knock-on effects on the Amazon rainforest including changing weather patterns. As the Atlantic warms, it is thought that the Amazon will experience higher temperatures and less rainfall, killing trees and damaging entire ecosystems. Deforestation can utilise slash and burn techniques, which can then lead to forest fires spreading out of control. In 2005, a forest fire that spread due to drought led to 100 million tonnes of carbon being released into the air. Interlinks between the water and carbon cycles. Both cycles are necessary to each other to function. The rain allows the growth of trees, which store carbon and release it in the form of litter. Without the tree's growth due to carbon, rainfall would be greatly reduced, as the Amazon generates 50 to 75% of its own rainfall from tree transpiration. More specifically, as rainfall decreases and the Amazon enters drought, forest fires become more likely and tree growth, and so also carbon cycling, is reduced overall. On average, a 100 millimetre decrease in water leads to the loss of 2.7 tonnes of above ground forest carbon per hectare. Protective measures for the Amazon. National parks have been created in many places, such as the 49,000 kilometred squared Central Amazon Conservation Complex in Brazil, set up in 2003 meaning that logging and mining can be more easily monitored and prevented. Many countries have environmental laws which ban logging, mining and exploitation of the forest, but these aren't always enforced well and deforestation continues to take place. Some countries choose to take part in selective logging and replanting, such as Peru, which is planning to restore 3.2 million hectares of forest by 2020. However, in other parts of the Amazon, such as, such as Brazil, more roads are being built, including the BR319, which increase access to the forest and so make mining and logging easier. Brazil's current president, Bolsonaro, wants to exploit the forest rather than protecting it. Since 2006, the Brazilian soy industry has forbidden the clearing of new forests to plant soy products on as the result of a Greenpeace campaign. Exam practice question. Assess the potential causes and impacts of change to the water balance within a tropical rainforest that you have studied for 20 marks. This is from the 2018 paper. There are 10 marks each for AO1 and AO2. AO1 involves an awareness of factors leading to change in the water cycle over time, 
a knowledge and understanding of the chosen tropical rainforest case study. AO2 involves application of knowledge and understanding to assess the human and physical causes and impacts of changes to the water cycle in tropical rainforests. AO1 includes looking at processes driving change in the magnitude of water storage over time and space, the concept of drainage basins as open systems, changes in the water cycle over time to include natural variation, the key role of carbon and water stores and cycles in supporting life on Earth, with particular reference to climate, the role of feedbacks within and between cycles and their link to climate change, and the use of the case study of a tropical rainforest setting to illustrate and analyse key themes in water cycles. AO2 involves referring to changes in the water cycle as an indirect consequence of human activity, with a range of human activities mentioned. Some may consider the potential role of climate change and its impacts upon the water balance in tropical rainforests. AO2 also involves looking at local and regional impacts of changes to the water cycle, with local changes including increased likelihood of flooding and regional changes including reduced convectional rainfall as a loss of water in the system. Regionally, some may argue that it is expected to be a decrease in the discharge of rivers in tropical rainforests as precipitation levels fall overall. Support should be offered to a named tropical rainforest and some sense of the nature or character of the place concerned may be conveyed. There should be some explicit overarching assessment based on preceding content.